Welcome back to Burn the Ship, the podcast where we connect entrepreneurs to professionals and help you go all in on your business. I'm your host, Ezra Brown. Without further ado, I'm going to allow my guest to introduce himself. Well, hey everybody. My name is Stephen Newland. I'm a fractional CFO, and I serve small businesses that, that have a mission and uh, nonprofits. Awesome, awesome, Stephen. Uh, great to have you, man. I appreciate you making the trip over to come sit down with me. Um, kind of give us a story, you know, what, what's this professional journey been like for you, you know, to, to be where you where you started to where you are now? So I, I always knew from a young age I wanted to do something with numbers and math. Like, that was just my sweet spot. Didn't like English class, loved math, loved mm-hmm. all that kind of fun stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I came down to Atlanta after right after graduation, so I went to the University of Cincinnati, originally okay. from Ohio. Um, go Bearcats, go Bengals. Y'all almost, y'all almost won a natty. <laughs> we almost won one. Yeah, 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 that's right. And we got Joe Burrow now in the Bengals, so I feel good. I feel Joe good. Burr. <laughs> that's right. Um, so anyway, I, I came down here uh, to Atlanta after graduation and started working for Delta in uh, in finance there. I did that for a couple years, um, and then I got this like I call it my mid twenties like career crisis. Like yeah. I had paid off a bunch of student loans, and I was like, man, I want to go help somebody else. Like, I want to go help other people do this. Right. So I went and uh, took this job at a nonprofit. It was a pretty big church down in Buckhead, and I took this job to help run their financial education program. Um, did that for about six years, and then I, like, went back into startup finance. Right. Helping, helping startups kind of do the same thing, um, you know, just build their build their finance team out. So, That's awesome. Um, anyway, and I, then I kind of fell in love with that. So I kind of am mixing both my passions of nonprofit <laughs> and the finance side now. Right. So, That's super, super yeah. awesome. You know, kind of kind of where are you at right now with it? Yeah, it's uh, so about a year ago, I, st- I made a, like a like a baby step in to do my own thing. Yeah, I was working with a, another firm uh, based out of Rhode Island, and they were doing fraction. They're doing fractional CFO work. Um, so I had a number of companies that I worked with, right. and I was full time, kind of running an apartment, running a portfolio of businesses. And I said, you know what? Let me just take the first step. Let me just like jump out on my own a little bit. And so I, I started working with a nonprofit here in Atlanta locally, mm-hmm. and then I went on contract with my old company. Okay. Um, figured, okay, let me use some of that extra time I've got to start marketing and start, like, spinning up some stuff. So, right, right. Um, yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. So kind of, you know, what, what did you go to school for? Finance and accounting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Figures, figures yeah, as much. Yeah. Figures as yep. much. You got a master's degree? Nope, just, nope, a, just, just undergrad. Yeah. Awesome. I, I kept thinking about it, and I always told myself, you know, I'm going to do it after I graduate, and then... I just never, yeah, but never the, went back. The amount of knowledge you've gotten that grape up there from being around so many businesses has been that's is right. probably unmatched. You know, you, you, that master's degree is not going to help you do that. Yeah, I mean, that's been I. I just tend to. I, I was always good at school, but man, I just I just really enjoyed like real life, the business world experience. Like I just really right. love that, and I uh, found a ton of value in just like kind of jumping around and getting new and different experiences. Right, so. and then you saying and going into being a fractional CFO. So what what is your like sweet spot of business? You know what is your ideal sweet spot? I know you're with nonprofit stuff now, yeah. is much now, but what yeah. kind of been that sweet spot over the time? It's I love and 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 so I work with nonprofits, but I also work with um, small businesses that I say kind of have a uh, have a mission okay. that they're working towards. So like for example, I worked with a small uh, startup here in Atlanta. They were focused on helping people pay off debt, mm-hmm. and so financial literacy is like a huge thing that I that I love uh, and I'm passionate about. Right. Um, but what I really enjoy is that like company that's found traction but they just like need a little bit of help to get to the next level or they found themselves like okay i got this thing off the ground i got a little momentum but now like i've just it's getting too big where i need help managing this and and like the the payroll numbers that are coming out every week man like they're starting to get scary they're Mm -hmm. starting to get big starting to check that bank account more often those are the types of people i really really enjoy working with Man, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So you definitely hear people probably tell. So you going in and help educate them, you know, on kind of what they're doing, you know, on the back end. It's that's not making them work as or getting the most profit margin out of what yes. they're doing currently. Yeah. So you you probably handle you probably really don't like people in my industry a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what's interesting is like with payments, I I so I've I've dealt with a lot with that. Like I see like a lot of the Stripe fees and a lot yeah. of the credit card fees, and I'm like, how do we work to like figure out a way to get this better? How do we how do we improve these? Because most business owners I work with, they they hate those fees because they no, just see it as overhead. Large, but they are, yeah. you know, it's large. Yeah. It's, it's it's egregious. They gouge people. For yes. things like that. You know, it's a strict three percent with any of those that's companies. It. Yeah, and that is kind of what we've gotten to do like really well, and that's kind of what's really fun about being here. Is we're a wholesaler, so we get to kind of mm-hmm. go in and when we see Stripe, Square, QuickBooks, <laughs> we get excited. We're like, 
we'll give you better functionality, yeah. better customer service, and we're going to give you a way better price point because we are a wholesaler. We go all the way at cost of the card if we have to. Yeah. You know, it just depends on where no processor is ever going to lose money. Yeah. You know, they're not going to go $20, $20 in the red to right. get a client, you know, but we'll, we will go make 20 bucks on an account a month to make sure you're taken care of and we get your business because it helps us with the relationships. 100%. You're building and a long-term thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You yeah. know, and then you don't tie them into a contract like these big guys do because they're, they have no skin in the game. They don't care. Yeah. You know, and that's why yeah. it's so expensive. But, um, no, definitely. And then what, what would you say is like the one thing you did really well when you kind of first started out? Well, I would say the, the one thing I've always been pretty good at, um, uh, maybe not early, early in my career, but as I got, as I've gotten a little bit older, I've, I've kind of identified it as a strength of mine compared to other finance people. Right. And it's, I've got the ability to take numbers mm -hmm. and translate it in a way that it's, here's what it means to the business owner. Right. So there's a lot of, and I love, I love my finance and accounting people, but there's a lot of us that are just like, can't get out of the spreadsheet. They can't, they like, they can't translate it into like business. Into real, sense. real world life, like situations. hundred percent. And that business owner that you're talking to, I mean, I'm sure even in this, even in payment industry too, it's probably like, there's a lot of technical stuff that yeah. you don't want to get into at all. Cause it's just like, exactly. Okay. At the end of the day, how, like what, how much am I going to like pay for payments? Right? right. Same thing with finance and accounting. It's like. Okay, at the end of the day, just tell me how what you're telling me is going to help me either run my business better, help me save money, or make more money. Right, yeah. And so I've had a really good kind of knack for translate, being a financial translator is That's kind of what I'd call it. Right, yeah, because so. Joe at Joe's Plumbing may be the best plumber in the country. Yes. But Joe at Joe's Plumbing has no idea what the back end of his business looks like. He just knows that yep. he can go out there, work on something, and he knows he's getting paid. He's like, why am I, you know, my profit margin should be here, but yep. it's here. Yep. You know, it's there's things in the back end that you got to look at and definitely, you know, payments and then how you're running your payroll, things like that are definitely big into that. Um, and being able to get away from like the spreadsheets, definitely a big thing because most people in your industry are glued to the spreadsheet. Yeah. Are yeah. very much so that's, that's, that's definitely a good, good trait to have for sure. And then what would you say, you know, kind of your favorite part of your day to day? It's, uh, I would say, you know, one of my favorite quotes was when I was working with a, a CEO uh, at a startup here in Atlanta is, uh, I remember them saying, you help me sleep better at night. <laughs> and it was because they, they didn't have a, a great forecast in place and they right. didn't really know like where their cash was going or right. how much cash they were like expected to have in the bank, you know, over the next three, six, nine months. Right. I mean, in, and just ha so making decisions with, you know, a, 50 to 100 person like company without visibility it's right. like you can imagine the stress that would put on you yeah because i mean you get over 20 people and a company starts getting totally you know, that, that starts getting a little bit expensive totally and so and so like just giving the peace of mind and saying you know no one no one in finance and accounting is going to do a perfect forecast it's impossible that means right. you can tell the future like, right it doesn't right. but you can get it if you can get it 80 90 percent of the way yeah you have eliminated 80 to 90 percent of that stress that business owner had and right. that was keeping them up at night and so right. i love to see those moments on a call where it's like okay i got a sense of relief right that's stuff. awesome and then yeah. so for you do you go into the business uh you like go in like once a quarter once once you start working with them or you you kind of like go in and operate for them for a while kind of show their team what's going on kind of how's it yeah. how's that how's that look what does it look like for you that's a great question i so there's always like an onboarding phase so you go you're usually meeting like weekly or even a little bit more frequently than, than that right um where you're just trying to learn the business, learn the industry, learn the nuances of like what they've got going on, the right. team. Um, and then usually after that, it's like a, it's like an every two week check-in. Okay. Um, and then there's like work being done in the background, but, right. um, it's typically every two weeks. That's, right. that's so, awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So what, uh, I guess you would say, what would be your biggest objection in your industry right now? Like what is your, mm. what is your biggest objection when acquiring new clients? That's a good question. I think, I think it's the fact <clears throat> that in a, like for me right now, I'm a one person shop. Right. And so uh, for me, it's it's convincing and building trust. It's mm -hmm. convincing like, you know, if someone hires me, mm -hmm. they that means I have I've had to build enough trust that they're like, yeah, I'm willing to give you, you know, this much like money every month. Right. It's almost like hiring an employee. Right. Um, but there's no like interview pro like there's not like a formal interview right, process, right, right? Right, right? And so um, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is just like, you're not buying a product. You're buying like someone's expertise and knowledge that right, you're you buying, may not know. You're buying what's up here. That's right. And it's, un, it's invaluable. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's, you can't put a money number on that. You right. Know? It's, I'm sure you, I'm sure you charge a steep amount to go in and, yeah. and, and get it, get a business. Yeah. Cause I talked to a ton of consultants a lot, you know, that's been kind of what we've been talking to the past couple of weeks on the podcast. And that's something I've learned to, like through talking with them. And it's like, God almighty, like some of these people, like they charge so much, but 
it makes sense though when you sit down yeah. and really talk with them. Like you can't the information that they can give you, you know, that you can give somebody is invaluable because it can change their business, make a whole one eighty yeah. in a short span of time. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and I would even say for me, like I, I've probably at times like undercharged myself. Yeah. Um, I've talked to some people in the industry and I'm just like, You're charging how much? And it's and it's crazy, but it truly is like you can bring a lot of value in a in a role like this. Right. Um so but I try to I try to keep it fair. Yeah. Um, and then how would you say you're uh what what are you trying to do? What are you doing for growing your business currently? Like networking, you doing anything anything in that nature besides you know, know just calling around cold calling doing things like that yeah i would it's a it's honestly like a three-pronged approach uh and i'm still trying to figure it out i'm right, a finance no, no, numbers right, guy right so you know marketing and that kind of stuff like it, it it takes it takes a little bit of thinking for me to get there definitely it's a whole bunch of trial and error doing that stuff <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean that's super yeah. super steep getting into that that's yeah. a whole slippery slope you can go down you can go 50 different ways in marketing <laughs> that's exactly right <laughs> yeah and you don't know if it's like working until a few months later like that's the tricky part right 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 exactly um but the three things <clears> i'm really trying to do is first one is networking so mm -hmm. just leveraging my network and just reaching out and just seeing how can I be helpful right um, trying to build a relationship first and then worry about the business come that'll come later right um, the second one is honestly like uh, like picking out and kind of going on podcasts yeah so this is was great when, yeah. uh, when this opportunity came up and the third one is just consistent posting on LinkedIn yeah and just kind of showing demonstrating value uh, ha that way have you seen good ROI on your LinkedIn post yeah you know it's been it's been dormant for a bit and but that's kind of getting fired back up I about two uh, it was about a year and a half ago I said okay I'm gonna be I'm gonna be dedicated to this I'm gonna post I think I posted like four to five times a week consistently mm -hmm. for probably a good six months to a year. Yeah. Uh, and I grew from a couple thousand followers up to 7,500 followers over that time. But I built relationships and I built right. like, you know, uh, interesting like, connections that yeah. I would have never had the opportunity to, to meet with otherwise. Right. And it's crazy how just regular posting yeah. um, makes you, can, you can kind of demonstrate like, hey, here's, here's my knowledge base. Right. Like, here's, yeah. Here's what I've got going on. So. Yeah. That's absolutely because it helps you reach people that aren't just local to here because you know what I mean? That's right. LinkedIn's got worldwide. Right. That's awesome. So, and then you're, and you're kind of like us, you get to freelance, you can go anywhere in the country and do work. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I've worked with people. I mean, I've worked with all over the, all of the country. It's all zoom. I mean, it's all yeah. like virtual. Yeah. Uh, I do have, I do have a couple of people that I work with here locally. So right. that is nice to like put a face with a name and like right. go to the office. But yeah, I mean, I've worked with people. I've got a couple of clients now that I contract with who, They've got people in like France and and so kind of all over parts of the world. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And then, you know, like you like you said, uh, how you're um, like you like building relationships first, man. That's, that's I can appreciate that very much because that's how I that's how we operate here. Yeah, is try to build. That's kind of how we're trained. You know, just build a relationship. If you can build a relationship, even if they don't stay with you or sign up with you, they will find somebody if they like you enough or yep. they or they trust you enough. They will send you people. That will help you out, you know what I mean? That can be somebody that takes payment. So that's definitely yeah. one of the big pillars because I'm sure you've gotten business from somebody that you've done business with before totally. that, that has sent you somebody because they're like, look, I trust Steven. You need to go You need to go work with him. Totally. And especially when you're in that, you know, in that bad side of the boat that you're not trying to be in. Yeah, and I would think like even it's pretty similar, I would think, in these like in both industries because it's like there's a trust level that yeah. – you're dealing with payments like that's so critical to yeah. a business like i have your bank account like your yeah, bank account information like yeah. your money you know and right and it is also like that that side of it. They're, they're getting they get fired up you know like yeah i promise i didn't try to let that eleven thousand dollar charge not go through when your average <laughs> ticket's two thousand right and you just try to run a card for eleven grand that's nine thousand dollars over what your normal <laughs> ticket is oh. Oh. you've got to call me and tell me that you know what i right. mean it's, unless you're a big old like automotive shop that does two hundred thousand dollars a month where right. you're you're used to seeing like an eight to ten thousand dollar transaction come through every once in a while yeah. but you know if mom's mom and pop's flower store over here they're running a forty dollar card every day and then they try to just swipe one for three thousand dollars you're like yeah we immediately get a notification like oh god oh, yeah. gotta go gotta go see call them be like is this are you trying to do this transaction they're like yep I'm like all right cool and then you send it through but it's just one of those things it helps a ton when you have the relationships built up because then they don't they don't get as frustrated with you because they kind of understand especially when you lay out the kind of groundwork at the beginning of a relationship yeah it's kind of how it is whenever you start up and how it's going to be so that's that's one of those things that i've had to lean on a ton is building relationships so that way people won't leave you you yep. know because we, we are going to serve your business good and we're going to do good at what we say we're going to do but at the end of the day there's going to be we're in merchant service sales they probably get 40 calls a week totally. about it you know what i mean people call them and Hey, we can beat your rate because that's what everybody says. Yep. And then you get in there and they will, but they're going to put you at something behind the door, behind the closed door that's not seen by you, Mr. Merchant. Yeah. But I can <laughs> see it because that's what I do. You know, I, I know there's a little fat somewhere in the, in oh, that. Oh, yeah. 
there's some fat on the bone. Like the guy just walked out of his business. It was a five percent rate, and I almost I almost wanted to punch his processor in the face. Oh jeez! Like how did you get a how do you even get to five percent? Like if I could put somebody at five percent, I would love to. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. Does it make killer margin? I was gonna say that's like, that's like crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's... That means you're making almost three percent. Right. Per transaction. Right. Not like, because that's after the interchange of the highest card. Right, right, right. It's crazy. <clears throat> but no, what would you say was like the one thing you kind of struggled with when you first started out? Yeah, I think uh, biggest thing was just being too uh, complicated in like some of the spreadsheet work. So I'll get like, I'll mm -hmm. give an example there. I would I put saying, to, I have to elaborate for me. Yeah. A bit. yeah. So like, th so everything, emote, like the bulk of what I do, the bulk of the value I provide is building that forecast. Mm -hmm. And so at a couple companies I was with, they, they were just trying to get off the ground. They were, they were relatively small. Um, you know, I built this like spreadsheet where it would like spin and you'd have, you'd have to like in, make, put an input in and then it would spin for a while. Right. And then, and then you'd need to like, the CEO would come and say, Hey, like, can you run like X, Y, Z scenario? I need to know, like, if I go hire this person or if I try to roll out this new product or if I change my energy, you know, or if I change my, uh, stripe fees, like whatever, right. like, what does that do to my, my cash? Right. And then what I realized is like, I would do that and it would take, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get that back to you in like three or four days. And it's like that I've like now moved more towards, Hey, I can turn that around in like an hour or two. Right. Like, it's just simplified it. Correct. Simplified. So I've always been good at communicating. Mm -hmm. So taking, even though it's complicated in the back in the behind the scenes, I've been good at like taking that and communicating it. Right. Now I've gotten better at, let me just simplify things on the back end and be able to then communicate it well. Right. And I found that has been a much, much more effective right. uh, thing for me. Absolutely. You see, you know, I guess you see more success from people cause they more, I guess translates easier for them yeah. than as a, opposed to whenever you go put this big yeah. big picture together because sometimes you educate people too much you know what yeah. i mean sometimes they're you, we over educate them in sales you know if we're selling stuff to people because it's like we want it to be good because we know the service we're providing to people i run into it all the time like I, some when i first started out i was definitely overselling like mm. you know some people they get confused confused people don't buy from you yeah and if you can keep it simple for them and make it you know hey joe this is what i'm gonna do for you this is how it's gonna be this is exactly what you're doing currently, but I'm going to do it this way, and we're going to save this amount of money. But as opposed to you could be like, well, I'm going to put you at this rate on this card, this rate on this card, yeah. da, 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 and then they're sitting there like, <laughs> like what? what are you talking about? Yeah. And I'm like, mm, I've, I've talked myself out of that deal. <laughs> one of my uh, – one of the uh, guy, I think his name is Donald Miller. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He does like, he does like marketing and some marketing stuff. He One of the things he says is uh, burn, the calor burn the calories for your customer for them, right. meaning like – like if you're the one kind of making it like dealing with how to like communicate it simply right take all the take all that burden off your customer and just do that for them he's like they will they will buy from that person presenting that simple offer right like nine times out of ten because you're doing the same thing that you were doing before giving them the simple offer it's just putting it in their terms yes. you know what i mean putting it, it in yeah. regular regular terms is yeah what I'd say. and how is that gonna like what's the bottom line of how it's gonna help <clears throat> me as a business owner yeah right right right, right. and then so mm -hmm. this last one we always we always end with this one this is kind of our our go-to is why we named the burn the ship <laughs> but you know where we got burned the ship from yes so central american key store Hernan cortez uh you know they landed modern day mexico thought it was the america but whenever they got there he made his men disassemble their ships and take off all their supplies and burn them on the beach and that was his, their sign they're going to make it there and die trying and you know you're right. you're just you know you're just starting out that burn the ship moment and you know what what was the emotions whenever you really were like all right i'm gonna take this first step yeah, so a year ago is when I really like made that first step, and then I would say um, it didn't feel like my burn the ship moment, but yeah. like where I'm at now feels like the burn the ship moment because yeah. I had been on a contract with my old firm for a while, so it was like pretty predictable. Yeah, uh, like what you know what what I was going to bring in, and right. now it's I'm I'm wrapping that contract up actually like a week from today or a week or a week from now mm -hmm. and uh just gonna rely on my own contacts and my own clients that i'm finding so which is awesome there's a it's a i've you know being a finance person I've, i'm probably a little conservative in my planning so like i've built up you know a 12 month runway of like yeah. money in the business yeah. where i can like pull it and not notice a change in my lifestyle right, right, right. um so i think that's helped me feel more comfortable with the burn the ship moment but right. It's uh, it's exciting. It's yeah. something that I feel like you know I've worked my whole career up to this point to be like you know what I got the skill set I've got the ability I've got the network to like go out and do it so let's right. try it and 
my uh yeah like what why not what's the what's the worst that can happen that's kind of how i've approached it right then you just so. go back and sign a contract again with somebody else because they'll take you back correct you know yeah I mean? i'll build a i'll build another boat exactly <laughs> it's exactly how it's how i'm thinking about it exactly. i'll find something on the island and build another boat exactly so. that is that is awesome and steven tell the people where to find you yeah you can check me out on linkedin steven newland um or you can check me out at moneypathfpa.com uh, would love to connect i'm uh, i'm often on linkedin so shoot me a dm shoot me a message would love to connect Awesome. Awesome. Steven's a great guy. Guys, burn the ship. We'll see you guys next time.